G'day guys, Big V Podcast here, uh, Senior Division 2 men. We're going to break down some MVP candidates for each team, uh, and then we're going to touch on you know who we might think we'll possibly see in uh, the All-Star 5 uh, and an MVP, obviously. We're going to kickstart with Altona, because you've got Adam Anderson at the top of the points per game list, 24 points per game, uh, shooting 34% uh, from the Beyond the arc, five rebounds, a few steals here and there, a CS all over the place. But then you got, you know, Samson Rocker and Nick Patel. Patel, who's had some some near triple doubles. I think he might have got one yeah, uh, yeah. earlier on in the year. But no, three guys who are very, very dominant in the South Tony unit. They did knock off Whittle City, given their first loss for the season. I believe it was two weeks ago now, I think. Correct. Um so interesting whether Adam Anderson is gonna poll a lot of votes because you know, Rocker and Patel are going to steal some. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I find it pretty interesting one that Adam Anderson because even when you... Um, I, I wouldn't have expected him to be at the top of the points per game if I wasn't paying attention. He mm. sort of just goes about it really consistently getting his points but has probably less explosion of, you know, the 30-piece 30, 30 games. Yeah. Um, he's just super consistent and super efficient, um, which makes him a perfect fit for this Altona team. Um Moving on to Mornington, we've got Kieran McQueen, who was just the June player of the month. He's started a little bit slow, and I think he would be the first to admit that uh, for the season. But tell you what, his last month, on just a, probably two months, has been phenomenal. He's averaging 21 points a game uh, to go with his 10 rebounds a game. Um, and the only thing which he might have is Brad Murphy taking votes because um, those two are the important duo as they make their final push for um, the final five. Um, they've been some, in some really good form. Yeah, absolutely. Sherbrooke here, you got Christian side of home, the three-point threat, 32 points per game. I am obsessed with him because he loves to shoot the ball, and so does Ted, 106 uh, shot attempts. <laughs> uh, but he rebounds the ball like mad, 12 rebounds per game. Uh, he can dish the ball when he wants to, just under two assists. Um, this man is probably clear-cut for Sherbrooke, I would think, and, and definitely in the race for the MVP candidate. Yeah, for sure. He's just a really nice player. He sort of comes in, he does his job. He doesn't – not too much carry on from him, and he um, he's just a really nice piece that I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of teams would love to add to their add to their roster. Absolutely. Ty Erard uh, for Surf Coast, 19.6 uh, points per game in his 15 uh, occasions. They're very, very tough piece to be able to guard. Uh, can shoot the ball at a pretty good clip, 25 point, 25% from three, rebounds the ball well, uh, does turn over a little bit, uh, but, you know, he makes up for when he uh, gets his assist. So a probably high clear-cut uh, MVP candidate for, for Surf Coast there. Yeah, the only other one potentially stealing a few votes from him would be um, Conrad Cooper with his ridiculous rebounding numbers that he gets, mm-hmm. uh, that we know he can get. Um, Craigie Burns is an interesting one because Gene Vocal has... He hasn't played the last couple of weeks, but he has actually stepped into the coaching role. Mm. Um, so whilst he can be an explosive scorer, um, averaging 19 points a game, um, he has missed a lot of games. Um, and then after that, you'd sort of see uh, Guy Depoy. He hasn't been seen for a, uh, a while, but Abraham Solano has probably been their most consistent. Uh, he can score the ball. He's averaging 13 points a game, and he, and he usually, I, I would say, he's probably the most consistent for them. Yeah, absolutely. Wallen, uh, you've got some players here who are probably stealing votes off each other. We've spoken about this quite a lot in the majority of our podcasts here. You've got Keenan Gorski, 19 points per game. R.K. Lalamade, who is absolutely dominant. Uh, you got Tyler Best. you got Tom O'Connor, who's probably pitched in a few votes here and there. So, I mean, it's tough to see here. Tyler Best has played 14 games. So, whether he's the team MVP, he could be. R.K. Lalamade is... I played his 11 games, so whether he's stolen votes, it's it's very interesting to see here because there's a lot of guys here that you know have come out and, and shown their brilliance in, in different games. Yeah, I think it's a pretty well-spread sort of team when they've got a lot of scoring power. It's just a matter of getting them all on the on the court at the same time, Ted. And um, for me, I'd probably sit there and say Tyler Best has been the most consistent yeah. over the most most games here. Absolutely. Melton here, you got the Leah, uh, Blake. And Liam Ellison, brothers, 16 points per game and 15 to brothers who just continue to, to fight and battle it out as the season comes to a close there. Uh, you've got Maccabi, you've got Eden uh, Sharmas, 
who is possibly their number one guy, but you can make a very, very good uh, case for Klaus uh, and, and obviously David Tolley. Yeah, I'd probably pick Adam Klaus on the fact that he's oh, he runs the point, he's the, he's the general, and, and Nidane Shamus has just missed too many games, I think. He's only played the nine. I know he's been suffering some injuries mm. throughout the year, but um, veteran Adam Klaus is averaging 15 points a game and, and you know doing, doing everything we expect. Over to Whittlesey. And Whittlesey is a really interesting one because, once again, they have several talented players and, and which makes them such a formidable team. Led by Pat Green, who's averaging just under 18 points a game. Um, once again, one of those guys who's incredibly efficient, shooting 51% from the three-point line. Um, he does not take bad shots. He does not turn the ball over too much. Um, but uh, he, he does sort of set the team up. And the other one is Gabe Evans, who's... After a pretty slow sort of start to the season for Whittlesey, he really came to his own. Uh, I believe he was the May player of the month um, with an exceptional month there, and he sort of kept on, kept that going. He was certainly in contention again in June. Yeah. Uh, Mildura, the, the furthest team away, so we'll touch on them last. Cameron Gross uh, playing in his 14 performances, 16 points per game to go his eight rebounds. You could probably say him and Sammy Gazzo uh, are the two sort of Clear-cut guys, but you got like Dallas Brown, 13 points per game, and Shadok, uh, just shy of 12 points per game as well. So there's a number of guys here uh, who would be stealing votes off each other in, in this unit. But, yep. you know, Cameron Gross and, and Gazzo are probably two guys who would make that push uh, to possibly find themselves in the starting or the All-Star 5 uh, towards the end of the season. 100%. Look, that'll be all for us today, guys. Keep it locked. Big V Podcast. We'll catch you very soon as finals loom.